fizzy drink once in a while. I know I do. But there's much debate whether carbonated drinks are good for your health, whether diet drinks are better than the normal full sugar ones. This is the debate for today's science video. My favorite fizzy drink is definitely gonna be Coca-Cola. And when I try to decide which Coke is better for me and I see all the varieties on the market shelf, I wonder, hmm, which one is actually the best? So what goes into fizzy drinks? Firstly, carbonated water. Usually, sparkling water can occur naturally, but with fizzy drinks, carbon dioxide is mixed with water under pressure. Then you have sweeteners. For diet sodas, you're going to get artificial sweeteners. And then you have acids, preservatives, flavoring, colors. If I have to have a fizzy drink, my first choice will definitely be Coca-Cola. And I wanna to talk to you about these five big guns on the market. Most carbonated drinks have sugar or the diet versions have sweeteners. Now, there's much debate about sweeteners, aspartame in particular, and sugar. Which one's better, Coke versus Diet Coke, or Coke Zero, or Stevi Coke, or Coke Life? Oh my God, the options are endless. Let's start with the original Coke. Not because I'm matching to it, but because I wanna tell you how much sugar actually goes in a can of Coke. For illustration purposes, I'm gonna show you how much sugar a normal can of Coke has. Eight teaspoons, roughly, of sugar. Let's talk food science. That's a lot of sugar. That kicks this baby out of the game. And what's the difference between Coke and Pepsi? Well, none. All the ingredients are the same. They still have carbonated water, they have the sweetener, they have sugar, caramel, flavoring, and uh, phosphoric acid, actually. Now, phosphoric acid is known for consumed in excess, not great for your bones, so I'd watch for how much you consume of Coke, generally, but the sugar content in this is even a little bit higher than Coke, so that one's out of the way. And that leaves us with the more healthy options. Diet Coke, Coke Zero, and this one I'm gonna come back to. Fizzy drinks and diet drinks are also sweet. So what do we put in to compensate the sweetness? Well, sweeteners. And these in particular have aspartame, the wicked aspartame, and asulfame potassium, ACE-K, for us. Aspartame is almost 200 times sweeter than sugar, as is ACE-K. And that is why Diet Coke, whilst, and caffeine-free Coke, Coke Zero, are extremely sweet. The main attraction to these sort of drinks, diet drinks, is actually the fact that they hardly have any calories. I mean, zero, one calorie, if, if anything. Zero calories, one calories, good news to me. So how does it actually work? So when you sip a sweet drink, the messages your brain gets is that something sweet is coming. So your sweet receptors will send signals to your brain and then to your body that energy is coming, glucose is coming. So in a way, you're kind of confusing your body and you're still not giving it the sugar. So the calories and the sugar are completely unrelated. This little trick that your mind plays on your body because of the sweeteners actually may lead to your body wanting to compensate for that sugar energy that it didn't get. So what often happens, and this is why there's so many studies linked to obesity, is after having fizzy diet drinks, your body is gonna crave the sugar that it wanted and didn't get. So is aspartame bad for you? Here's the key question. There's a lot of research about aspartame and it being a big baddie, but actually, if you consume Coke in moderation and you have one a week, it's really not gonna do any harm to your health. According to the Food and Drug Administration, aspartame is actually safe for human consumption, but there have been a lot of contradicting science reports that it is linked to peaks of insulin level, type two diabetes, obesity, etc., 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 etc. But there's also the fact that carbonated drinks aren't great for your teeth. The dentist will say so. This is why Pepsi decided to eliminate aspartame from its ingredients. With that in mind, Coca-Cola decided to bring out a natural sweetener in their drinks. For example, Cola Life. Actually, green cola. Cola Life got scrapped because it didn't just have stevia, it also had a combination of sugar with stevia. Green cola, however, is considered a natural sweetened cola. Or is it really? This one has carbonated water, just like the others. Color, just like the others. Sweeteners, ooh. Sucralose and stevial glycosides. 
What's that? So cola green claims to have stevia, which is naturally derived and probably you would think healthy. But actually, what's in this is a sterile glycoside, which is a processed chemical derived from the stevia plant. So actually, it's not that natural. And it isn't great tasting either, I must say. I'm not a fan of aspartame. I'm not a fan of any artificial sweeteners. You can find out all about sweeteners in my video on sugar versus sweeteners, available on YouTube and Instagram. Everything should be consumed in moderation. You've heard me say this n and n times again. Moderation is key. So once in a while, if you really want a fizzy drink, then reach out for a sparkling water, my favorite drink, or any carbonated drink that doesn't have any artificial sweeteners. There are quite a few on the market. But it's Coke, isn't it? I do crave a Coca-Cola once in a while. So why not reach out for a Pola Kombucha? It will kill a bit of that craving once in a while and it's far healthier than any of those artificial carbonated fizzy drinks.